What exactly is a tibial plateau fracture? How do these knee injuries occur? In this video, I'll explain how you break the tibial plateau and what treatments exist to help you heal and recover as well as possible. My name is Dr. David Geyer, triple board certified orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine specialist, and anti-aging and regenerative medicine expert. I help you feel, look, and perform your best regardless of age or injuries. Now, tibial plateau fractures are fairly common, especially in injuries like motor vehicle accidents, car crashes. You don't see them all that often with things like sports unless it's a fairly significant traumatic injury, a significant blow to the knee of some sort. In case you're wondering, the tibial plateau, let me show you on this model, if I pull the kneecap away, you've got the femur and you've got the tibia. The tibia is the shin bone. The tibial plateau is the top of that tibia, the top of the shin bone, basically at the top of the knee. It, it basically supports the meniscus uh, and it basically is the lower part of the knee joint. And it can break again with a traumatic force. It can be the medial tibial plateau, more commonly the lateral tibial plateau on the outside of the knee, or it can be both. Now, occasionally, very rarely, but occasionally, it can be a non-displaced fracture, again, usually of the lateral tibial plateau, and it can heal without surgery. You could put somebody in a hinge knee brace that allows the knee to flex and extend, but it avoids side to side stress and that can heal. But very often it's either displaced or it's broken up in a number of different pieces. And an orthopedic surgeon will say, hey, you need to have surgery to fix this. And it usually is plates and screws, but it can be different devices that, that try to get it to heal. But typically a fairly big surgery. Sometimes you stay in the hospital afterwards. Sometimes you go home. It depends on how severe the injury is. Then it's a matter of getting that to heal. And so that's going to be a fair amount of time being non-weight bearing, basically not putting any weight on that leg while the plate and screws are, are holding it together, trying to get it to heal. Uh, then it's a lot of work getting the knee range of motion back, getting to where it can bend and get all the way straight. Very, very important. And physical therapy, very, very big deal trying to get that better. But again, if the surgery lines up that bone uh, very well, holds it in place and gets it to heal, and that surgery typically does heal reliably with surgery, then you can have very good outcomes. One of the problems though with the tibial plateau fracture is that it, it extends almost by definition into the joint. And so even when the surgeon puts it back together well, you're at higher risk for osteoarthritis down the road, hopefully years down the road, maybe decades down the road, but it is a higher risk. Non-surgery treatment, that rate of arthritis down the road might be even higher. And so it is something that with that, that higher rate of arthritis, people have started to speculate, well, would regenerative treatments play a role? Now, would something like penicillin polysulfate, which is a medicine that is FDA approved, but you have to use it off label because it's not approved for arthritis or other treatments, maybe that stops some of the cartilage and bone damage in the days after surgery, stops the inflammatory cytokines and degradative enzymes damaging the cartilage, maybe there'd be a lower risk of arthritis down the road. Don't have a lot of studies for that. More of what penicillin is used for is once osteoarthritis occurs, but potentially that could be something that would be helpful. When arthritis does occur years after a tibial plateau fracture, then maybe that's where the, the role of something like platelet-rich plasma or stem cells or exosomes. Again, experimental treatments, I'm not promoting that, but people ask me about those. Maybe that's those are things that you could use down the road when arthritis starts to set in. People ask, well, if I suffer this injury, would peptides help me recover faster? Things like BPC-157 or thymosin beta-4 or CJC-1295. Potentially, they could help recover faster. If you've got a displaced tibial plateau fracture, it doesn't change the fact that you're very, very likely going to need surgery. But in theory, again, these are experimental treatments, but in theory, peptides might speed your recovery recovery, speed the healing, speed your return of muscle strength to let you get back to activities faster. Again, not promoting that. It's just something that people ask about. So very, very difficult injury, very often needs surgery and a long recovery, a lot of work and time on your part, but can have good outcomes down the road. Now, I'd love to hear your experience with your knee injury. Leave those in the comments below. Just understand I can't offer you medical advice, but I do try to answer your questions 
in future videos. Make sure to subscribe to my channel, click the bell to be notified when I release a new video and start a new live stream like my Ask Dr. Geyer Live shows. If you have knee, hip, shoulder, or some other bone or joint pain and you want to get significantly better in the next 30 days, potentially without cortisone shots and surgery, learn more about working with me in the description below this video. Thanks for watching. I look forward to helping you feel, look, and perform better than ever.